Let's just try going like this. Yeah, see, now it doesn't work. Bro, I kid you not, I have not been more serious in my life. I just recorded the entire video, and it was like 8 minutes long. And then I realized the entire time I had my voice changer on. And I kid you not, bro. I scream, dude. Like, but yeah. Anyways, so the last video got a little bit of trash, and it got like, uh, I don't know, like 40 likes. So I was like, you know what? Why not just continue the series and just like help you guys out? So today, um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a no clip system. Before I actually teach you guys, you guys are supposed to actually. I guess uh, have watched the last video, which is the movement validation video, because that's basically the the framework we're gonna be using, the same framework. So, how we're essentially gonna make this system is we're gonna have two positions, which we had in the last video, of course. So I'm gonna make one that's uh, let me make this green. So this one is the new position. This one is the old position. So what we're essentially gonna do is every time the new position changes we're gonna check we're gonna run array uh, array is basically uh, uh i'm pretty sure you guys know what array casting is well if you don't know what array casting is you should probably look it up because this video is not going to be mainly explaining array casting it's just going to be explaining like i guess the logic behind a no clip system so i'll dumb it down though array cast is basically array that goes from one origin to a direction that checks if there's any parts in between that and that so Let's say this was the old position and this was the new position. So we would run a ray cast from here to there. And if we find any objects on the way, what we're going to do is we're going to set them back to this position. So the new position will be set back over here. So that's basically the logic behind our uh, no clip system. Some people think it's complex to make a no clip system, but it's really not. It's actually like under like six lines. But like, I guess. To actually be able to script, you just need to have like a good like, uh, like problem solving, I guess, instinct. So, what we're gonna do now is let me delete these parts. And what we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna make a new folder in workspace. We're gonna call it characters, and we're gonna basically place all the characters here, and basically everything that I guess should not be counted as a part, like in the no clip like process, but. Anyways, so we're going to go over here in our movement validation script, which we put in starter character scripts, and we're going to go over here, and then we're going to be like, repeat task.wait, uh, sorry, what? Until uh, character.parent is workspace.characters, until character.parent is in workspace.characters. So what it's essentially going to do is it's going to put the character in the characters folder, and we need it there because we want to ignore every single character in the noclip process. So, uh, Roblox is generally is really laggy when it comes to players and stuff. So, let's say there was two players, right? And some player like moved like through one another, etc. We don't want them to just keep no clipping back and rubber banding. So, what we essentially wanted to do is we just wanted to ignore those characters. So. When we do this, we place them in the characters folder, we're essentially going to ignore them. So let's first start off by making a ray parameter. Uh, actually, let me check if my voice changer is on. I'm sorry. I, I just get like, I'm just scared. Okay. So it's on. Anyways, so we're going to make a ray cast parameter. It's going to be like, I guess, params is ray cast params dot new. And then params dot filter type is enum dot ray cast dot exclude because we want to exclude everything in the characters folder. Now we're going to do params, filter descent, dance instances, is workspace.characters. And then over here, we're just going to be like, ignore water is true. Just in case you have like the Roblox water material, we don't want it to just like, every time it like dives in, it's just like the rubber bands on the top. We don't want that happening. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just record the actual distance between the all the last recorded C frame and the new C frame. So what we're gonna do is uh, distance between is last recorded C frame dot position minus human root part dot position dot magnitude of course. So just to test right now, we're gonna make a basic raycast and we're gonna call it ray raycast, which is we're gonna put the origin as the human root part 
Actually, no, we're just going to put it as the last recorded C frame dot position. And then the direction is going to be the last recorded C frame dot position minus the humanoid root part dot position. And then we're going to use the unit uh, vector three thing. I don't even know what to call it. Is this a method or something? It probably is, whatever. So, and then we're going to times it by the distance between. And then we're going to fill the ray cast params as params, which we defined over here. So, now let's check if there's actually any, I guess, instance that was between those two part, uh, those two positions. And we're going to check if our player can actually, I guess, go through them. So, what you essentially want to do is you want to make a torso variable. So, we're going to check if the humanoid is a R6 rig. If it's an R6 rig, we're going to do R6, R what? Humanoid rig type. Where is it? Humanoid rig type, yeah, there he is. So, torso equals character find for shot torso, else torso is character find for shot operator torso. Why we're doing this is because, like, Mainly, um, R6 has one part that's called torso, and R15 has the upper torso and the lower torso. So, we're just going to fill in one of them, I guess. So, we're going to check if the torso can... Actually, let's let's actually um, type check this. I know this is a very horrible way of doing it, but it's whatever. Actually, what? It doesn't even work. Let's just do base part. This part over here. So it can collide with, and then let's do ray dot instance. And if they can collide with it, let's just say um, player is just no clipped. Let's just print that. And what I want to do is I want to just make a random part over here, and I want to extend it like that, and then make it like red, just for the sake of visualizing it, I guess. And then we're gonna make it like this, and then we're gonna anchor it. So. Let's say I'm like some exploiter and oh, there's like a sneaky little prize over here. There's like infinite Robux or something and I want to get through that, but you see it's closed. I can't and imagine there's like, I guess, walls over here. So I can just walk through it. Anyways, so let's say I wanted to get through it. What I essentially do is select the part and then set the cane collide to off. And once I do this, the part is, I can go through the part, only me I can go th through the part, if that makes sense. Only I can. So, if I go through it right now, it will say player just no clipped. If I go through it again, it will say player just no clipped. So, the system works, even if I try like rotating through it, etc, etc. It will still work. So, now that we printed it, we want to actually rubber band the player. So, how we do this is simple. We're just going to go like humanoid.rubberpart.c frame is the last record C frame. And let's try testing it right now. So let me go over here. Let me do the same thing I did earlier. And then let me just can collide off. And then let me try to go through it. Wait, what? Oh, got over there. Huh? That's low? What? Why is it bugging now? Okay, let's check. Let's receive that position. Oh, I know why. It's because we're supposed to put the humanoid root power position instead of the last recorded position. So humanoid root power position is supposed to be the first one, and the last recorded position is supposed to be the last one. So let's try pressing, pressing play now. Oops, I forgot the can collide off. Let me just go over here. Can collide is off. Let's try going like this. Yeah, see, now it doesn't work. Because it was bugging last time. Okay, if I go right here, I still can't get through. So that's basically the no clip system. There's nothing really much to add to it, but. If you're using this in a serious game, I recommend you have like a little system that like in a period of 15 seconds, it checks if you have more than like, I guess, 10 anti-chi violations, then it kills you or it bans you. Banning is a little extreme. Maybe it kicks you. So it kicks you or it gives you a strike or something. And I guess that's the best way to actually do it. So I guess that's it for the no clip system. If you guys have any tutorial ideas, just send a uh, like a comment and just tell me what you want to learn about i guess and if i have enough time on my hands i'll actually do it all right so thanks for tuning in the video okay bye guys